Our next guest is going to be a happy man. He is Kurt Roper, the, who is the new offensive coordinator at the University of uh, Florida. And coach, uh, really good to visit with you. And uh, I'm sure it was pretty cool last night uh, having uh, Tim Tebow on campus. Uh, any chance you could slip a jersey on him and uh, start him in the first game? <laughs> he, he still definitely looks like he's in shape to play football. It was actually the first time I've met him, and it, and it was really cool. You know, it is when you get to meet obviously guys that have accomplished so much and they're so talented you know even as coaches we get starstruck and and uh so that was a pretty neat deal but thanks for having me on your show again no it's great to have you we uh, we had such a good time uh, the last i know that it's, it's a busy time getting ready so it, it's even more uh, uh we're more appreciative of you being on than ever before talk a little bit about jeff driscoll and uh, your thoughts on him so far as uh, we're two weeks away from the first game well, I think he, he obviously did a good job this summer spending time trying to just really uh, entrench himself in the offense. I think he's really gained a really good command of what we're trying to ask him to do. He can fix little issues that are taking place with alignments or or communication or whatever it is. And so I think his command of our offense is, is really showing itself in camp, which, is, which you know, I'm obviously – enjoying a bunch and, and then he's making a lot of plays i think he's uh trying to get the ball out of his hand on, on a timely manner and, and he's been accurate overall coach uh, we we know what happened uh, to driscoll last year with, with the broken leg it, it was a terribly unfortunate season i mean you're you're i mean you've been there for a while now you just didn't pop in uh with camp but uh, can you can you sense uh, a change a transformation you know, I don't. I don't really know, just because I wasn't around him before. But but from the time I met him, I, I've met a really calm. I, you know, he's come across as a really confident person. He's a really good person, um, but he's he's a, I, in my opinion, a really confident football player. And I tell him all the time, if you're not confident, if you're not mentally tough, it's too hard to play this position. It will beat you up. And most really talented players fail mentally much sooner before they much sooner than failing uh, physically. And so I think his confidence has been high since I've met him, and and, uh, and I like that. And I think it's growing the more he knows our offense. This may be a, a, strange, a strange question, Coach, to ask you about your boss and his confidence, but I saw him a couple of weeks ago at the SEC Media Days, and you would have thought the guy was coming off of three straight national championships. Uh, what's going on inside uh, Will Muschamp's head? Because I, whatever it is, I like it. Well, like I said, I've been with him just a few months now, but but Coach Muschamp's accomplished a lot in his career, whether it's as a position coach, a coordinator, or or even a head football coach. So, you know, I don't think uh, that he's ever lacked confidence, nor should he. He he is uh, really really good at what he does. And I mean, with with all the outside noise and, and you know shows like this, and, and and everyone else brings up his his job security. I realize that's not your responsibility or, or your job your job is to get uh, Driscoll and that offense clicking on all cylinders but uh, can you at least address that I mean is, is there is there do you still sense it in the room or because uh, of his swagger uh, at, at least for the time being seems to be outside you know I think it's completely outside of our building you know it's such a day-to-day -day mentality in really football and I'm assuming probably other sports too but you really focus on the nat the next task at hand, and I think our guys are doing that. And and, uh, and if you do that, you you really focus on the things that are important, and that's trying to get a little bit better. But but I don't sense it at all in our players, and I don't sense it at all in the coaching staff. And and uh, shoot, we're just enjoying being together and, and working. Coach, uh, with with two two weeks and one day before your opener against Idaho. Do you deep down have a have a pretty good idea, sense, uh, whatever the word maybe best uh, applies here, uh, of what your offense is going to look like on that game? I know I know you're charting it out, but I mean, do you do you feel like things are progressing to a point where you could play the season this weekend? Oh yeah, I, our guys could go play a game right now. We're obviously not completely game plan for Idaho or any of that, but but we've got our base offense in and our guys can go execute that I think at a, at a fairly high level at this point um, but, but we're always moving forward always trying to get better I think it was coach Malzahn that said and I read maybe a couple weeks ago a month ago something like that that 
it took him four games to maybe realize the kind of quarterback he had. And, and uh, after that four games, they really figured it out and caught a roll. So I think we've got a good sense of what, who we want to be offensively, but we're also going to, going to learn as the season progresses. It's interesting when, when you, when you have, and I, again, I'm, I'm, I don't mean to be disrespectful to your opener. I mean, a lot of, a lot of schools play uh, big openers. You at, at Florida, you guys play the, the toughest game uh, at the end of the season against FSU. But when you, when you have a game or two that the critics uh, and the cynics, perhaps like me would think would be an, an, an easier game how much do you prepare for a few weeks down the road when it, when it really gets intense? And, and I know a coach doesn't like to talk about it, but you have Alabama on September 20th. And all, in, in all the buildup, uh, have you looked at or do you look at all the different games and, and come up with at least a moderate plan? Well, I, you know, I got a, a story for you. But, but yeah, you what you do is in the summertime, you got quite a bit of time on your hands to watch opponents all the way down the line. But once you start getting closer, you start focusing on the opponent in hand. And and I was a GA. Here's my story. I was a GA 1996. We were a pretty good football team at the University of Tennessee and really preached that we were preseason number one. And we lost early in that year to Florida. They got after us pretty good. Uh, but it at the end at the point in the year we were rocking along pretty good and really working our way back into the national championship hunt and that week we actually went out of conference and we were playing memphis and i was sitting out on the bench uh pre-game warm-up and i saw the some of the memphis players walk on the field and in my mind i'm sitting there and I'm, i played at rice university so you can understand where you know where my background was, I'm watching these players walk on the field and and I'm thinking in my mind, you know, these players work hard. These are really good football players, really good kids. I'm sure that work hard and they got no chance tonight. (laughs) Well, (laughs) I was 23 years old and learned a hard lesson that night because they beat us in the Liberty bowl. And from that point on, you know, my mentality has completely changed. And, And obviously you can lose at any point. And so you better focus on the task at hand. Yeah, and, and, and not to uh, to bring up just last season for the Gators, but uh, I don't remember too many too many of uh, my colleagues picking Florida to lose to Georgia Southern. So yeah, I mean, I would I would think at Florida right now, uh, you don't take anyone for any any one or anything for granted. Just looking ahead a little bit, uh, not so much to Idaho, but just the season in general. Uh, I, I know I've asked you about the offense, but uh, give us a a sneak preview of the defense because that that is something that many believe will be quite good under Will Muschamp in his uh, as this season unfolds. It's been a challenge this camp for sure. I tell you what, uh, they uh, give you a bunch of different looks, a bunch of different problems to work with, and I think the biggest problem is is the speed and physicality. So it's it's definitely a challenge to go against them every day. But but I'm um, you know you hope that really helps your offense get better and better and really understand the speed of the game that it's going to take to win at a high level. Great stuff. Uh, we, we decided not to uh, ask you about the Book of Manning. We did that the last time, but everyone knows you uh, <laughs> You have quite an association with the, the Manning family. And uh, that game against Memphis, was I, I'm, I'm, I vaguely remember, Peyton, was Peyton the quarterback uh, during at that, at that loss at the Liberty Bowl? He sure was, and, and uh, shoot, he he was fun to be around. Now that guy was a, a heck of a football player. I just I texted Eli uh, early in the week, wishing him good luck for this season, and, and he texted me back, said, "Hey, good luck too, Coach. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to pull for the Gators a little bit now." So, uh, but that is a superstar family, not and I mean people wise, not just talent. It's a great family. Well, uh, Kurt Roper uh, affiliated with that family, also with. Uh... Coach Cutcliffe at Duke, and what a year that was. Many thanks and best wishes for coming on. Always good to talk. Thanks for having me. You bet. Kurt Roper of the University of Florida, the offensive coordinator, two weeks out. Uh, probably had better, probably had, had better things to do tonight than to uh, chat with us, but we're much appreciative on our first show on the SEC Network.